The next lesson we're going to look at is the heel. Now heel is also a key lesson for retrievers and we want the dogs under total control as we walk through the field. This may be very useful if you have a pointer and you're hunting pheasants and your pointer is pointing. You can keep the retriever on the heel and only release him after the bird is down if your pointers are not force fed to retrieve. But anyway, just to give you a summary of heel. I never teach heel to a dog unless he's about a year old. Do not attempt this with a young puppy because it can really take some fire out of a puppy and it's one thing we want to leave in puppy dogs. We want to keep them energetic, energized and full of life and enthusiasm about work. So if a dog is a very big male strong dog, I may teach him heel at, six, at 10 months old. But generally, I wait till one full year. Now again, Many pros and many other people will advocate the use of a choke chain on this. Or some people have recently advocated a slip lead in a reverse than normal position and they call that a slip lead with feel. Now what they try and do there is they try and signal the dog that they're going to tell them to heal. Uh, I'm going to recommend we don't do that. Again I'm going to recommend we use a solid collar. I have a completely solid collar on the dog and I have a check cord on the dog, 30 foot check cord, which we don't really need for this lesson. We want the dog to walk beside us. Now the thing to remember is this dog is trained to heal already, as all my dogs are at this point in time. But um, I'm going to show you how to do this. What we want to do is we want to hold the lead and the collar and as the dog moves past us, we want to give him a tug back. Now I have found over the years that instead of giving him harsh, uh, vicious one-off tugs, what you want to do is you want to give him lots of little tugs. So continuously tug back on the dog, just gently, but continuously do it. And every time you do that, say the word heel, 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 heel. And then when he tends to come back and stay in the heel position, then do that less frequently and say the word heel less. Now sometimes when my dogs get close to learning this, I'll take the dog on maybe a five mile walk and I'll, I'll reinforce the whole behavior over a five mile period. The other thing we want to do after that is we want to step the dog onto a different stage. And as opposed to applying a force to the dog's neck, because as Newton says, Every force has an equal and opposite reaction, or every action has an equal and opposite reaction. What we want to do is I want to change up the whole training technique and teach you a completely different way of approaching heel with a dog. Now I have a healing stick and a lot of people use this to teach a dog sit by uh, giving him reinforcement on the rear end. Uh, what I tend to use a healing stick or a walking stick for, and sometimes I use a leash, is to move in front of the dog. I use the, the the healing stick like a pendulum or I use a, a separate leash or the long check cord, I get the other end of the check cord and I'll swing the check cord in front of the dog. Now what this does is it, it transfers the stimulus from the neck of the dog and from my left hand to in front of the dog and it spooks the dog to move the dog back. As I do that, as I just swish it, I'll say heel, heel. Now as the dog moves in front of me, sometimes I will contact the snout of the dog when he gets too far. And then that will tend to push him back. Also what you can do is when you swing the lead, not only can you touch the snout of the dog, but if he is really far ahead, you catch the dog on the front left shoulder. So it does two things. It brings the dog back in line with you and it also brings him to his right, which tucks him into your left leg. Now it depends on which side you can change these sides for which side you have your dog on, whether you're a right-handed shooter or a left-handed shooter. But I'm right-handed, tend to have the dog on the left. So again, we're going to use the stick as a pendulum and then we're going to use a lead or a check cord and we're going to use it also like a pendulum but we're going to swish it in front of the dog and we're going to throttle the dog back and then if he's really getting aggressive and getting out there then we're going to contact him in the front left shoulder and pull him back into the left leg. His right cheek should be contacting your left knee. Now if you have multiple dogs you can also teach multiple dogs to do this and there's no reason that only one dog should heal. Uh, I'm going to show you in a minute we're going to have two dogs on heel with no leads and no collars and it should be completely obedient. Now as you can see it's really hard to display how effective this lead is in front of the dog because this dog is already trained for heel. 
But really what I'm suggesting is if you have a young dog or if your dog somehow is pushing in front of you, don't get into a battle of strength with your dog. Introduce him to the command and then use the stick as a pendulum. And remember, you can also use the stick to touch the front left dog's shoulder or the dog's front left shoulder as you can use with the lead. So use this, get a little bit more experienced and when the dog sees something move in front of him, say the word heel and the dog will throttle back and I think this will be a really good lesson for your dog and it will be easy to teach him. And within a week, I predict if you do this properly, within a week you can have the most aggressive dog healing correctly. Good. Heel. One other ever so small point I would like to point out is that when you move a dog from the sit position and you want the dog to heal, I generally lead off with my left leg first and that signals to the dog to come in the heel mode and I say the word heel. Now after you teach the sit command, gently tug the dog with you, say heel and walk. Because what you can do later on is you can teach the dog to move from the sit position on your left leg, but if you lead off with your right leg, it means stay. This is a great tip for when you're hunting, again, jump shooting ponds. If I'm walking up to a pond with a shotgun and I'm on my way up and the dog is at heel and I stop, the dog should automatically sit with no other verbal communication. When the dog sits, and I want to creep over the pond to see what's there. If I move off with my right leg, the dog stays there. And then if I move off with my left leg, he comes with me. Now I haven't trained these dogs for this. I did with some other dogs. It's just a little tip just to tell you when you do move off with your dog, lead off with your left leg. If you choose to add this to your hunting repertoire, your dog training repertoire later on, then it's very easy to train it. You've already preconditioned your dog.